Hey everyone, this is Chris Decker, your guest host for today. I'm honored to be recording this first episode with Rebecca Panapinto so that you can get a behind the scenes first look at this show and what's to come. We're going to learn more about Rebecca's career, her digital drive, and step into the world of technology and communications on the Fortune 500 level and beyond. With that, welcome to the Rebecca Panapinto Project. How are you? Hey, life's good. How are you doing, Chris? I'm excited to record this with you so that we can get an inside look at who you are, your career, and what led to this podcast taking shape. Yeah, it's been an adventure. Um, I'd say COVID is to blame or COVID is to thank. It could kind of go one of two ways. Um, But yeah, it's been an awesome ride and I'm excited to meet you to really take things to the next level. So let's talk about that. COVID was to blame or COVID was to thank because we found ourselves all of a sudden in a world where we're forced to adopt digital insanely fast. Those that were adopting it had an upper hand. Those that needed to adopt it had to catch up really fast. But I'm curious what your experience was. Well, I was selling probably the best thing you could be selling during that period, which was the cloud. Uh, working for Rackspace at the time. And I actually just started in the role and was sitting here going, I'm ready to be all in, work really hard, hustle, and do a lot of damage in the cloud space. And then everything shut down. And Mm -hmm. I was relegated to still having that same quota expectation, that same you know, drive and passion to want to make that big impact in the industry, but doing it 100% remotely from my, at the time, tiny little 700 square foot living room. Um, And I freaked out a little bit. Mm. I honestly was sitting there going, how am I going to meet these people where they need me to meet them? If I literally stuck just over zoom, that was the, the platform of choice at the time. And I was used to, especially I'd come from the South. I was used to selling in person and the wine and dine. And, you know, you had to have at least six touches in person before somebody was going to even consider buying from you. And here again, I'm stuck in my living room at the mercy of whether or not they join my virtual call. Mm -hmm. And I felt super stuck. I was like, wow, what am I going to do? How am I going to hit this quota? How am I going to be successful? How am I going to find this fulfilling when I'm a social person and I want to be with people? And so I saw outside help. Um, A good friend of mine is a mindset coach, Michael Zeller, and he changed a ton of my perspective and it was a absolute game changer in how I responded to COVID and how I decided to really own the fact that I was exclusively going to be a virtual seller. So you decided you're going to exclusively be a virtual seller, that you were going to own that, that you were, you had hired this mindset coach, a friend, Michael Seller. Could you, could you tell me a little bit about what that process was like? Well, it was all over Zoom. (laughs) So even though at the time I was back in Nashville, where I had originally made the connection with Mike, we were meeting over Zoom and he was doing some really cool promotional type events and courses to help folks in this weird stage of COVID and and how they were going to manage through it. And I did a lot of one-on-one time with him about this kind of mind block I had of how am I going to be successful when I'm stuck? behind a camera and it feels so impersonal. It doesn't feel real. Um, You just feel like this was my initial reaction. I guess people can kind of string you along and tell you one thing that's not really true. And you can't get the full body language and the full story when it's only over video. So Mm -hmm. I kept saying, this isn't real. This isn't real. Like, and again, talking myself out of being able to be successful. And Mike just turned that around by helping me understand that I, at that point, had never met him in person, though we had been friends for almost three years. It had been exclusively a virtual relationship. And all these other people that I had a similar type of rapport with were virtual relationships. Mm. Heck, I mean, in this day and age, social media, online dating, ton of relationships are more heavily virtual than in person. And so we worked through a lot of that. There's also um, an NLP type of a methodology that he follows that we walked through. And it led to then a three-day retreat in the Colorado mountains Mm. where we dove deep into this as a group, encouraging each other of now that we've kind of understand 
the roadblocks that we're up against, how are we going to get over them and how are we going to grow together and challenge each other? And basically out of all of that, I got inspired to start a video cast and use the free time when I wasn't selling and chasing what I needed to do for Rackspace to start building my own personal brand and really fostering relationships that I had within my network by maintaining them virtually. So you were maintaining these relationships virtually through your video cast. Can you like, what does that mean? Yeah. So a lot of these folks, especially when I first started, were just friends and mentors that I thought had something to share that hadn't had the audience or the place to share it. And so before I had any of an agenda around what I was going to do with the content, where the show was going to go, I really just wanted to reconnect with these people and show the world how cool some of my friends are. So some of the early episodes, Andy Lodato, COO of the Vitamin Shop, I just hadn't talked to him in forever, was super proud that he had gone from a CIO to a COO. And I wanted Mm -hmm. to tell the world that and um, have him help me launch this new adventure that I was going to see kind of where it went. Um, And it was a really great way to reconnect. He had COVID in his apartment (laughs) in the city. There was no way we were getting to hang out in person. And so we were able to manage it virtually and release some really cool content together. This is the fascinating part of of the story where you you went through this transformation. You're now in this community with with other like-minded individuals. You've broken through on these mindset things. You get together on a retreat. You decide that you're going to fully lean into this virtual selling. And I mean, look at your setup right now, the way you sound, the way you look. It, it, It seems like you've been doing this for forever, but realistically, it hasn't been that long that we've all had a chance to adopt this, but you went full throttle and and you and, and you started your video cast and now you're continuing to cultivate relationships and you're able to have that same kind of touch point that you were used to where you need six in-person touch points in Nashville to you know see COO of vitamin shop can be in his in his apartment in the city and and that's that same connection exists have you developed any sort of secrets to making that work? Cause you, you clearly seem to be very good at it. I, I want to know for myself. <laughs> um, I think a preparing these folks so that they come in confident knowing, you know, how I want to highlight them and what their story is and how I believe their story is relevant to an audience. Mm-hmm. I think gives people a certain confidence level and, and gets them to agree to be a part of it in the first place. Cause most of these people are not interviewed on the regular. Um, probably 50% of this first batch of episodes I did Mm -hmm. had ever had an interview context previously. So getting them really comfortable and helping them understand the value and the just creativity they can bring to the world and how I want to showcase that has people really open up. And usually there's a conversation before we even start recording of their principles and their vision and things bigger than just kind of their day job. And people like to basically share that with the world and be a little vulnerable. And I've just done the best to create space for that. What was the, what was the platform you were using to record these video casts on? Zoom. <laughs> okay. So something interesting happened with Zoom, some, some shifts mm-hmm. in your career. Yeah. So I work for Zoom now, um, as some folks know, those that don't. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the product because of the experience I had building my platform exclusively on it. And not only just with the video cast, but I was using it exclusively for my responsibilities at Rackspace and ended the year 300 plus percent to my number. Mm -hmm. Again, exclusively virtually from, gosh, at least six different states. Um, At the time, I would basically leave for about a month every other month because I would get a little too uh, stir crazy in my tiny little apartment. So I was in Colorado. I was in Seattle. I was playing with friends and having a blast and reconnecting with old bandmates. We had one, one vacation in Seattle that we called bringing the band back together. And it was a bunch of my bandmates from, you know, four or five years ago, we all got back together and I still was able to work exclusively over the zoom platform. So it led to some great opportunities to come actually sell the product in the enterprise space. Got handful of customers 
in the Northeast that I manage for Zoom and really am here to learn more and more about how to build a great SaaS company. I've been very impressed by the product and how I mean, we were talking about this earlier, Chris, the user experience is unmatched. And uh, our CEO leads with this vision of customer happiness and his his happiness is the customer's happiness. And that mission has led to just an incredible product that I continue to use hours and hours on end <laughs> per day, per week, constantly. As I'm speaking for myself, as someone who does podcasting for a living and teaches and trains and coaches others to be successful at it, specifically in a sales context, I have maybe had half of a problem on Zoom over thousands of calls in the time that I've been using it. How, like half of a problem, maybe. And, the, and, and that's unheard of because I've experimented with many other tools. It, it is the best. It's ubiquitous. It works. I think we can all agree on that. I'm curious, though, how you've transformed through Digital Drive and the evolution into this next version of the project, which, which now under its moniker is the Rebecca Panapinto project. Um, how did that come to pass? Yeah. So I think my interests and relationships have just expanded and that's what needs to happen for the show as well. Um, more people that can be impacted by different versions and interpretations of what digital transformation is. And so you'll see as some of my new folks are coming on the show that are a little bit more tangential to traditional CIO, CTO type work, they still have a form of digital transformation they're bringing to their world. And not going to give you names or what they do yet, but just keep an eye out for the next few episodes, I have some really cool personalities coming on the show and still sticking with this theme of what does digital transformation mean in the context of what these people do day in and day out, but it's just not going to be as narrowly focused on that being technology, but instead overall of affecting business success and business transformation in all the different forms that it can be. And the interesting guests that I'm pulling on are going to help to really curate that and bring a really cool context to it all. Wow, there was there's so much to unpack there. From you said tangential to the the normal kind of CIO or, or or executive that has been on before, and my imagination's going wild. What is what does that mean? So, like, what kind of topics are we going to explore in technology? I I know you said you're going to talk a lot about business transformation, digital transformation, um, leadership, career, you know, success and and mindset. Um, but what do you hope, what do you hope happens here? Yeah. Um, what comes to mind is the personalities that are going to be a part of this and without giving too much away, um, as you see the folks that come on the show, you'll understand how it, it still touches tech, but it's not, um, in the traditional sense of building servers and, and going to the cloud. Um, but interesting personalities like folks using tech for a new type of gaming, um, using tech within the music industry, um, all these different ways that really technology touches every single area of our lives now, really highlighting that with all these different personalities and how they have built their future, their business. Some are entrepreneurs, some are more what you call a linchpin within their industry. Um, they get to showcase basically how technology has helped them build their own business and drive whatever it is they're looking to accomplish in the world forward. Oh, I love the thinking. I, I I love this 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 new this new version of what will be. Now I'm curious. So this first episode, it's very likely that a year, two, three years, a hundred episodes in, people will go back, listen to the first episode, see how this all began. But I want to ask you an interesting question. I ask most people that I do these first episodes with. Are you ready for an out of the box question? I'm so ready. Okay. It's almost like a time capsule is, can you send Rebecca in the future a mess, a, a message that you hope like a reminder, so, like something you hope to get out of it, something you want to remind Rebecca of in the future to, to 
Does that, does that question make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. My goal would be that the Rebecca Pena Pinto project community, which is what I'm looking to build around the show leads to people starting partnerships together, people doing business together, opening doors for each other, networking with each other. And they're becoming this ripple effect of the relationships in the community of folks that have decided to be a part of what I'm looking to build here. Um, and I would love for it to become a platform for myself to, to run my own software company as well. This leads me to my next question, Rebecca, which is what's a core principle you've lived by to be successful in business? Yeah, mine comes from inspiration really from Tom Bilyeu, who I'm such a huge fan of with impact theory. And it is do and believe that which moves you towards your goals. I say this every day, multiple times a day to myself. I have a necklace I wear from time to time when I need the extra reminder. And even as simple as getting up in the morning and I don't feel like going to the gym, it's do and believe that which moves you towards your goals. It's a, there's no option. If you want to be the person you say you want to be, go do it. Talk to me about the believe section, because it, it seems like there's a very specific order to that. Do and believe. Yeah, I think it stems from uh, another saying I like, which is take action and the feelings will follow. <laughs> um, it's similar with beliefs in that um, sometimes those are harder to, to conjure up and take a little more time to really be developed, um, takes thought and like so much so as writing them down. What is your belief system? They grow and change kind of like values, but if there's no action, none of that matters. Mm. So, a, you know, the gym is a good example, like get up and go do it. <laughs> and the belief system about I am an athlete and I can accomplish this and I can lift that all kind of follows after you just show up. And so my belief system is ever evolving, ever changing it, I hope always expanding and growing and me starting to dream bigger and realize bigger things for myself, but it doesn't change the fact I've got to get up and move and work hard every day. I believe this about you because you've shown me how you've turned that apartment of yours into a full fledged production studio, a full fledged production studio. You've got, you've got the camera, the lights, the audio, you've got two sets and they're like perfectly tuned. What is the belief here that is keeping you going with these actions? Because I'm really curious because you seem to be very, very serious about this. Mm -hmm. uh, that one is still a belief system that's being formed and more of following a person I want to be like, which is Tom Bilyeu and Chris Decker. <laughs> he's in there too. Um, but it's the vision of who our RP, which is my logo and what I call myself, who our P is going to be in, in five years has a home studio and wakes up every day and records content and adds value and interviews people and learns from, you know, camera one, mic number one to the consistent upgrades. Um, it lays the groundwork for for the vision of what I would like to do with the future. What a perfect way to, to, to end this first episode. Ladies, gents, Rebecca is doing the work, whether you're coming in because like in the beginning, cause she asked you, she posted about it. Could you please come check out the show or you're coming in from episode hundred, whatever that happens to be. The number one thing that you can do to help support is to leave a review on Apple. Let us know your thoughts. Let us know what you liked about it. Please leave that five star. That's the number one thing that will help get this out to more people. The number two thing, if you really want to help out from there is to share it on your social media, whether that's Twitter, whether that's LinkedIn, whatever it is, tag Rebecca. Um, if you tag me, I'm happy to also repost that on our company page, uh, whatever we can do to help support you as well. Thanks for listening to episode one.